The War Wagon is a John Wayne, Kurt Douglas film that was released in 1967. It's directed by Burt Kennedy. Marvin Swartz produced the film from an adaption by Claire Huffaker from his own novel. The movie was released by Universal Pictures. It had a great supporting cast with Joanna Barnes, Bruce Dern, Howard Keel, Robert Walker Jr., and Keenan Wynn. It's a real point of departure for John Wayne, who plays a bad guy in this film for about the first time in his career. His success in doing this makes you wonder what old Duke was waiting for anyway. He plays the leader of a band out to capture the war wagon. His old enemy, Kirk Douglas, and a crew of assorted castaways set out to capture an armored wagon protected by a Gatlin gun and 32 guards. The elaborate wagon itself is one of the film's top attractions. Another great point of the film is that Wayne and Douglas have a lot of cynical dialogue. At one point in the show, they enlist some Indians to drag branches behind their horses, an old Indian trick to make lots of dust so that Bruce Cabot will think his wagon is being attacked by Indians. Douglas ends up asking Wayne, you don't suppose they'd fall for an old Indian trick again, do you? Wayne responds to him, they'd better, and they do. The film was based on Claire Huffaker's novel called Bad Man, which was published in 1957. He later said that he wrote the novel in about 10 days. John Wayne, in June of 1966, had announced that he had signed a two-picture deal with Universal Studios, and those movies being made were War Wagon and The Green Beret. The films would be co-produced between John Wayne's company, Batjack Productions, and producer Marvin Swartz. This was the 11th book of Huffaker's that was sold to the movies. As a result, Trident Publishing put him under contract to write a book a year for five years. In July of 1966, Burt Kennedy signed on to direct the film, and that same month, Kirk Douglas was announced to be a co-star in it. Filming went on for 12 weeks, and it started on September 19, 1966. The film was shot in Durango, Mexico, with a lot of interior shots shot in Mexico City. They worked out a really good relationship between Hollywood and a Mexican crew that made the film go flawlessly. The writer of the novel and the screenplay was on set for the first three weeks and the last three weeks of production while they made a number of changes to the script. Now, the film had a lot of second unit work done, especially in the stunt work, and that was supervised by Cliff Lyons. In the movie, in numerous spots, you can see John Wayne wearing this silver bracelet that you see in a lot of his movies. The bracelet was a gift from tribesmen that Wayne received during one of his visits to Vietnam. The actor and singer Ed Ames sings the opening theme song, War Wagon. Now let's talk about the war wagon itself, which is a really important part of the entire film. The war wagon was built mostly of plywood and other lightweight materials and it was painted to look like it was iron. It's amazing what these prop designers can do to make a material look totally different than the product that it really is. They end up giving the appropriate metallic sounds, such as heavy iron doors being opened and closed, and this adds to the illusion that the entire thing is made of iron. For many years, at least through the 1980s, the deteriorating remains of the war wagon was on display in the Boneyard at Universal Studios on their backlot tour. If you ever take their tour, you'll see a lot of the props that were used in a variety of movies that just are sitting there wasting away. Eventually, 
this wagon gets moved to Universal Studios in Orlando during the 1990s. It's kind of interesting that one hub of the wagon was originally on a piece of John Deere farm equipment, as this is evidenced by the John Deere name cast in the hub. The type of Gatlin gun used on the war wagon employs a long stick magazine to feed the bullets into the gun. The magazine attaches to the top of the gun perpendicular to the barrel. The design of the wagon's gun turret leaves no room for the magazine, and when the gun is firing, it's really obvious that there are no magazines attached. According to the director, Burt Kennedy, he gave up half of his salary so that he could afford to hire Kirk Douglas. Now, this sounds like an amazing thing to do, but the money that Burt Kennedy made was probably set up so that in his contract, he got a percentage of the profits. So the better the film did, with Kirk Douglas and John Wayne as the two leads, would make Burt Kennedy more money in the long run. Howard Keel took the part of Levi Walking Bear, which is probably one of the strongest points in the movie that was criticized. They just didn't like the fact that he was playing an Indian character. But he took this role strictly because he needed the money. He was primarily known as a musical star, and no one had been making musicals at all for several years in Hollywood. So he had to do something to pay the bills. Now, it looks like the horse that Kirk Douglas is riding is the same one that he rode in Spartacus. I don't know this for sure, but I've read a couple of comments on this, and I think there's a high possibility that it was. Now, it's been said that Howard Keel threatened to punch John Wayne if the older actor grabbed hold of him again while they were shooting. It's noted that Keel later turned down a role in the Green Berets in 1968, and the reason that he gave was that he was previously committed to a theater tour. But whether that's the truth of the matter, I don't know. It may have been the fact that he was a little bit irritated at John Wayne. Now, according to Wayne, the fight scene that you see in the saloon is his 500th on-screen fight. I don't know who tallied all this stuff up. Maybe it was one of John Wayne's assistants, or maybe John Wayne himself. But it's a pretty interesting insight during his career. Kirk Douglas was one of the few people in Hollywood who didn't refer to John Wayne as Duke. And the reason that he didn't is he didn't like nicknames. He didn't use nicknames with anybody. Curiously, Yakima Canute, who was the expert stuntman and the second unit director, and also one of John Wayne's oldest friends in the business, didn't call him Duke either. He called him John. Now, according to production notes, Keenan Wynn's battered hat that he wears in the picture was Leslie Howard's Confederate cavalry hat from Gone with the Wind from 1939. Wynn got the hat from MGM, and he first wore the hat in a 1942 MGM screen test, and then he wore it in every picture that he ever made. Now, it's been noted that Burt Lancaster turned down the role of Lomax, the one that Kirk Douglas played, because he didn't want to work with John Wayne. Wayne himself wasn't real fond of the finished film, although he really did like the way that Kirk Douglas played the part of Lomax. He thought he was really funny in the role. And Kirk Douglas, being 49 at the time of shooting, did most of his own stunts. Kirk Douglas and John Wayne got along pretty good as far as political opponents go in their movie-making processes. But they were just polar opposites of the political spectrum. John Wayne being conservative and Kirk Douglas being about as liberal as you could get. During the production, Douglas was late to the set because he was shooting a commercial endorsement for the Democratic governor of California, Edmund Brown. John Wayne was just furious. He just blew his top. 
He came completely unglued about this. So what did he do? The very next day, he wasn't on the set because he went to shoot a commercial to help then-Republican candidate Ronald Reagan win that governor's race. Things kind of died back down and production continued, but John Wayne was sure irritated initially. The film opened number one at the domestic box office in 1967. It grossed almost $10 million in total, making it an overwhelming success. The War Wagon was met with generally positive reviews from the critics. Take a quick look back at this amazing film. I think you'll really enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.